we want to find the total mass of three churns of a wire spring along r of t with density given by rho of x comma y comma z. Let's first take a look at the spring in space. Here we see the graph of r of t, which would be the path of the spring in space. And we do have three churns in this graph. So our goal is to find the mass of this spring given the density function rho of x comma y comma z. We saw from our previous example, the value of a line integral will give us the mass of a wire where the integrand function f of x comma y comma z is a density function and the wire is given along curve c. So we can determine the mass of this wire by evaluating this line integral where again f of x comma y comma z is a density function and the curve c is given by r of t. So the mass of the wire is equal to the line integral along the curve c of the quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared integrated with respect to arc length. So notice how we'll have to write the integrand function as a function of t using x of t, y of t, and z of t given by r of t, and then differential s is equal to the magnitude of r prime of t squared dt. Let's first determine f of x of t comma y of t comma z of t, or we can also just write f of r of t. Where in our case, x equals two cosine t, y equals two sine t, and z equals t. So in our case, x squared would be four cosine squared t, plus y squared would be four sine squared t, and z squared would be t squared. Let's factor out four from these first two terms. So we have four times the quantity cosine squared t plus sine squared t plus t squared. Well, we know cosine squared t plus sine squared t is equal to one, so our function simplifies to four plus t squared. Now we also need to find the magnitude of r prime of t. So r prime of t would have an x component that's a derivative of two cosine t, which is negative two sine t. The y component would be the derivative of two sine t, which is two cosine t. And the z component would be the derivative of t, which is just one. Which means the magnitude of r prime of t is equal to the square root of negative two sine t squared, that'd be four sine squared t, plus two cosine t squared, that'd be four cosine squared t, plus one squared, simplifying. Notice how if we factor out four, we're going to have four times the quantity sine squared t plus cosine squared t plus one, which simplifies to just the square root of four plus one or the square root of five. So the magnitude of r prime of t is equal to the square root of five. And now we have all the information we need in order to evaluate the line integral. The given line integral is equal to the integral of f of t, which is four plus t squared. The magnitude of r prime of t is equal to the square root of five, so we have times the square root of five dt and now we need to find the limits integration for t that would result in three turns of a wire along this curve. Going back to the graph in space, if we look down on the xy plane, we can see the xy trace is just going to be the circle with the radius of two where the xy trace should be given by the equations x equals two cosine t and y equals two sine t graphed here. We know one revolution around a circle would be from zero to two pi radians, and therefore for three turns, the interval for t would be from zero to six pi radians. So zero to six pi radians would be three turns of the wire along the curve r of t, which again we see here in space. Let's rewrite this as the square root of five times the integral from zero to six pi of the quantity four plus t squared integrated with respect to t. And now let's evaluate this on the next slide. We're going to have the square root of five 
times the antiderivative of 4 plus t squared with respect to t. So we'd have 4t plus t to the third divided by 3. So we first substitute pi over 6 for t. So we'd have 4 times 6 pi plus 6 pi to the third divided by 3 minus, when t is equal to 0, notice both terms have a factor of t, so both terms would be 0. So we have the square root of 5 times the quantity 24 pi plus, this is going to be 216 pi cubed divided by 3. Well, 216 divided by 3 is equal to 72. So we have the square root of 5 times the quantity 24 pi plus 72 pi cubed. Notice how we can factor this further. The greatest common factor of 24 pi plus 72 pi cubed would be 24 pi. So let's write this as 24 square root 5 pi times the quantity 1 plus 3 pi squared. So this would be the exact value of the line integral. As a decimal approximation, this would be approximately 5,160.5098. So this does give us the mass of the wire along the curve R of t, graphed here in red, with density given by rho of x comma y comma z. I hope you found this helpful.